four young farmers from Kenya and Tanzania have been chosen to put their farming skills to the ultimate test. Over the next nine months, these four will take to the battlefield for a challenge of a lifetime. Each farmer is given one acre of land to call their own. They have nine months to turn their acre into a successful farm. At the end, the farmer with the most profitable and sustainable farm walks away with a monumental prize. The stakes are high and the clock is ticking. Who will be our farming people? farm for the second episode of Don't Lose the Plot. Now this has been a very busy week for our farmers and I can feel the momentum building up but they seem to be taking everything in their stride. So far we've had Marsico explain to us the vital importance of having clear farm budget and keeping check of finances. And we have had Sophie from CropNuts giving us the results from each of the individual farms and showing us how to get these products from our mobile phones. Well, I hope our farmers remember all this advice because we have so much in store for them today, starting with our show. Our first visitors on the farm this morning are Sammy and Jeremy from Osho. Osho is a leading manufacturer and distributor of farm products. But the thing I love the most is if you use Osho's products on your farm, they will support you. They send a local agent to your farm every week to keep check on how your farm is doing. Yesterday, our farmers got the results of their soil tests from CropNut. And now, Osho are here to help them choose the right products to deal with any issues. Now that you know us and what we do, maybe we can handle a question or two from you. Yeah, as for me, I found out I have nematodes in my soil. I was asking if there's something at least you can suggest I can use to protect my potatoes from it. That's a good question. Many of our soils have this problem of soil nematodes. Sami went on to explain that nematodes are tiny round worms found in the soil. And if there are too many, they begin to harm the roots of the plants, causing them to swell or break at the roots. There are two ways to treat soil nematodes. One, use a chemical called bionematone or nimbecidin. You can also combine the two chemicals to make them more effective. Simply drench them in the soil before doing any planting and that should kill the nematodes. Another question. Yes, according to my soil test shows that uh, it's deficient of sulfur. Uh, do you have such a fertilizer to counteract the deficiency of sulfur? Normally, we have two solutions to that problem. Either you can buy sulfur-rich materials or sulfur-rich fertilizers, uh, for example, gypsum, or if you don't find gypsum in your market, go find sulfur in the name of Brimstone 90. This 90 figure here indicates that it is 90% sulfur. Many fertilizers don't have sulfur as a mineral component. Buy sulfur in the name of Brimstone 90, put it in your fertilizers, mix and you have sulfur in the fertilizer. Any other question? Well, it seems that our farmers are making most use of the Oshal experts and I seem to have lost Jack to them too. Anyway, I snuck away to welcome our visitor to the farm. He's from Kenya Highland Seeds and I'm hoping he will help our farmers know which seeds to plant, which are the best seeds to plant, when and where. Well, let me go see him and see what he has to say. Michael from Kenya Highland Seeds was very excited to meet our farmers. I explained to him that crop nuts had given them the results for their soil test and that Osho were currently advising them on the best products to combat any issues found in the soil. We are hoping Michael advises them on what are the best seeds to buy and plant for their first season. Good afternoon farmers. 
Okay, now that you have done the soil test, now we are here today to decide on seeds. We are going to talk about certified seeds. And uh, based on that, we will be looking on quite a number of issues touching on certified seeds. Certified seeds are known to be high yielding. They have high resist resistance to diseases and pests. They have a longer shelf life. You can uh, purchase seeds or you can get ready seedling. One advantage is that when you get the seedlings ready, you are sure of the germination. So the seed rate is guaranteed. If you want a thousand or ten thousand seedlings, you'll just get the ten thousand seedlings. Michael decided to visit each farmer individually on their farms to discuss the choices they had on their lists. started with Windrose's farm, who has decided to split her farm into three parts. Which, which plant are you going to do in the first portion? Uh, first portion maybe I can do potato. Potato. The second portion I can do squash. Squash. And the third one I can do managu. Because of the rains that are almost uh, falling, uh, I would advise that you do also onions. Do you have a seed of onion? Yeah, we have various seeds. But it's now for you as a farmer, I would advise that you take red pinoy that takes shorter duration, which is three months. Okay. And then after it matures, it is also likened by the market. The, the other advantage is that you see the failure that far farmers normally fear is that uh, you may produce, may have your farm produce ready, but then there's no market. So you can as well store them for future sale, of which red pinoy can uh, be stored for six months or at least three months as you look for market. Hmm, well, I wonder if that has convinced Windrose to do onions. Michael seems keen that she does not split her farm into three, but rather choose one crop for the acre. Now next is Isa, who also seems to be planning a number of crops on his acre. Let's see what Michael thinks. Now, why have you decided to choose this, all these three? Well, you only have uh, one acre. Uh, this is competition. Mm -hmm. So when you do one crops mm -hmm. and the crops fails, yeah. it means you will lose your times at the farm. Mm -hmm. So when you choose different crops at the same times, mm -hmm. it helps you to... To spread your risk. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, if you choose to take uh, butternut, then you have two varieties. Yes. One known as Waltham, the other one is known as uh, Atlas. So Atlas is a hybrid. This hybrid will not fail you. Okay, so the butternut is the right choice for this farm. I would advise that you take butternut. Okay. So uh, like two, uh, three quarter of it, yeah, you do butternut, and then a quarter you do, you do spinach and skooma. Now, given the fact that we are approaching the long rain season, so I would advise that you don't take maize because the people from around are going to do maize. Maize also need a very large portion of land. You need like uh, three or four acres, but now your portion is just one egg. So if you divide one acre into three, then you're going to have a third of an egg. A third of an acre, there will be very small profit margin for you. Okay, thanks for your advice. Well, so it sounds like our farmers need to investigate what the neighboring farmers are planting in order to avoid the same crops so that they do not have to share market. Now next up is Ken. Ken has informed Michael that last season potatoes were planted on his acre. Now I wonder if that will affect his decisions. Well, I would say that you go for onions. Mm -hmm. Because onions, they don't belong to the same family okay. with the potatoes, now that you are done potatoes here. Uh -huh. One thing with the, with the nightshade mm -hmm. is that when it is raining, mm -hmm. we always have some that normally grow by themselves. By themselves. Uh -huh. So the moment you have the that you planted and somebody can get them just without struggling, mm -hmm. you see there's an alternative source of nightshade. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you do onions, mm -hmm. Then I'm very sure mm -hmm. that even if you fail to get the market, mm -hmm. once you've, uh, you've uh, harvested, mm -hmm. you can as well store them for at least three months or at most six months. Mm -hmm. What is the effect of dividing given land to have this plant and the other side to have the other plant? Doing uh, uh, mixed farming. So mixed farming, yeah, yeah. But now you see now it, it is applicable to whoever is having a big portion of land. Uh -huh. Now for your case, you see you only have one acre. Mm -hmm. It is not bad, uh -huh. but now for you to I mean, get a good profit, okay. 
then just choose one thing, one whole acre, you do one thing, and then you'll, you'll, you'll be able to read the market. Okay. So with proper planning and uh, yeah. market analysis, mm -hmm. it'll be safe. Oh. Wow! So Ken also needs to think about less crops for just one acre, and not planting the same as everyone else. Up next is Leah, and she is already telling Michael that she is not interested in doing nurseries. Instead, she wants to do seedlings so she can get planting right away. Sounds like a good idea to me. Why, why do you fear nursery raising? Mm. It will take time, mm. and then mm. my shamba will be idle. That's what I'm saying. Ah. You see, we are, we are targeting six months. Michael explained that although buying seedlings is a good option, you should not fear seeds and nurseries. If you plan well, you don't have to leave your farm idle. For example, if your seeds take a month before they are ready to transplant, you can grow a crop on the farm that lasts a month, say like um, coriander. Then once you've harvested the coriander, you plant the seedlings from your nursery. If you plan to plant your next nursery so that it's also ready to transplant at the time you harvest your current crop, you will be using your farm efficiently. And I don't want to do the whole acre, just tomatoes. Mm. I want to do half. And I need a room for other things, just in case I will do tomatoes for like ten months or for six months. So yeah. by the time you do bigger portion, uh -huh. then you're going to have uh, bigger production which is going to attract even anybody to come and, and purchase. I believe an, half an acre of tomatoes will do that. Half, half an acre of tomatoes can do, but half an acre of onions can't do. Somebody can't come for one, uh, half an acre of onions. In fact, so many farmers, so many brokers will come for three acres, four acres, or two acres. And what if I find my own market? You do your own market, you go and uh, sell by yourself. Yeah, I take to the market. We'll be handling your crops in the farm. Mm? It's <laughs> yeah. just a day, you yeah. know, it's just a day. Mm. I'll take like just a day to go to the market. So then there's a lot of work to be done. Oh, oh, it doesn't sound like Leah understands the market side of farming that well. When any other farmer. Produced. If the market is on Tuesday, what if I take my products like on Monday? Giving herself one day to sell all her tomatoes is very ambitious. Perhaps too ambitious. Michael explained that if Leah decided to take her produce herself, she will have to pay for the transport to the market numerous times because it's unlikely she will sell everything on the first day. She will have to go back and forth for days while her farm suffers from her absence. When brokers come and pick up produce, they usually fill a whole lorry full from the surrounding farms and they just focus on selling at the market until the produce has all been sold. We do tomatoes now. Not very many farmers are going to, to do tomatoes. To be yeah, to ready to do tomatoes because of yeah, the CCS yeah. humidity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you do tomatoes now, all the risk you've prepared yourself. But then at the end of it all, you're going to sell you and you alone. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it sounds like if Leah really focuses on her tomatoes and plants carefully, she could have one of the few tomato harvests at the market. Are you an aspiring young farmer and want more information? Log on to our website at www.dontlosetheplot.tv You can get agri-tips, rolling budgets and follow the contestants' journeys. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Are you an aspiring young farmer and want more information? Log on to our website at www.dontlosetheplot.tv You can get agri-tips, rolling budgets and follow the contestants' journeys. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Wow, what a successful morning. Mm. Now our farmers know what the soil is lacking thanks to crop nuts for testing the soil mm. and they also know how to access some of the products that they would need for the soil thanks to Osho. Mm. Now Kenya Highland Seeds 
just told them what kind of seeds they will need to have a very successful result. I think they're ready for planting. Well, Jack, I wouldn't say they're ready yet. You've forgotten one key ingredient. And what is that? Water! Ah, but water comes from the sky. Are you serious? You need to tell me that you would leave all your farm investments in the hand of Mother Nature? No, 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 no. We need to find a backup plan that we can help these farmers get water for their crops. Mm -hmm. And I think I know just the right person to help them do it. Miss Kenya, welcome to our farm. Thank so good you. to have you. Thank you. So this is the farm. Yep. The Explain to beach. us what is so different about this farm. What is so special about this pump? Um, so this here is a sunflower pump. Mm -hmm. It's a solar irrigation pump. Now what makes it so special is it's designed for small scale farming and use in remote areas. I'll quickly go through what makes it uh, a, a bit different, right? Uh, so this panel you see here can be used for multiple purposes. It can power the pump for irrigation and it can also be used for powering uh, and charging small appliances oh, like your phone, okay. which is perfect okay. for people who live in remote areas. Uh, the pump also uses a very simple technology, easy to understand. That means it can be fixed out in the fields. Oh. Yeah. And I think it's portable, right? I think you should uh, yes, that. Ah, yes, quite, quite, quite. Yeah, you see, <laughs> from the cage you see here, uh -huh. uh, one farmer can just hold there, get an yes. assistant and can oh. move it around, oh, can wow. lend it to the neighbor, get Incredible. some more cash, that sort of thing, yeah. So um, for my farmers, mm -hmm. how much would this cost? So for the panel and the pump, it goes for 65,000 shillings. Now, I know that's a bit of an investment for small-scale farmers, yes. uh, but for a typical farmer, they use about 2,000 shillings a week depending on how intensely they're irrigating their crops. This means that in nine months, they will already have paid back for this pump. Oh, true. So it's just the initial cost that's a bit high, high. but eventually exactly. with no recurring costs, the farmer just has free energy. Yeah, so it's it. a large investment at first, mm -hmm. but it will save the farmers a lot later on since yeah. it's using solar and all. Exactly, and even when you think about the dry season, they'll be able to have more income because they can oh, keep true. irrigating yes, when it's quite exactly. dry as well. Wow, yeah. incredible. Yeah. I can't wait to share that with my farmers. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys, what's going on? How's everything going? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so how are you all coping with all this information that you're getting from our experts? That's nice. Yeah? Yeah, we are enjoying the lessons and uh, some sort of knowledge that we are getting from them. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's up, guys? I'm just from talking to Kenya, who will be putting in water for you. And you know how important water is when it comes to, you know, making your budget. So, uh, Kimathi will explain to you guys further on that. Guys, uh, the, the good news is, um, because of the solar-powered future pumps, there's no cost of electricity because it uses solar. Um, but the most important thing that we need to know about this whole irrigating process and the pumps is that there will be the cost of water that you'll be pumping into the, for irrigation purposes. So there are a few decisions that you might just want to consider as you move forward with whatever decisions you make. Number one, um, what crop will you choose to plant? Because that will dictate how much water you therefore require and therefore, in, in case it does not rain, how much water will you need to pump in? Uh, for irrigation purposes, all right? That is number one. The other thing is, of course, all these things have to go in uh, into your budgets. Remember the budgets we were talking about? This cost of water will have to be factored in in that budget within under the, the line uh, of costs and expenses, okay? Yeah. All right, any yeah. question? But I thought uh, with the rainy season, we don't need the irrigation. Great, thank you. That's very good. Um, can you imagine if all Kenyans were planning they are planting around the rainy season. Not many Kenyans actually plan off-season. Everyone thinks, okay, let's wait for the rain around March, and then after the rainy season, or it doesn't rain, uh, oops, it didn't work out. Okay? Yes. So we cannot all plan around the rain. And we cannot uh, subject our, our planting and our planning as farmers or at the masses of uh, Mother Nature. Okay? Yeah. Kimathi went on to explain that if you plant in the dry season, not many other people will be planting. So, when it comes time to harvest, there will not be much competition at the market and you can fetch a good price for your produce. He also suggested that the farmers share the cost of the sunflower pump and piping between them. 
This is a brilliant idea. That's the benefit of having neighbors who farm. You can share expenses and reduce costs. Sir, thank you very much, guys. I really have enjoyed myself. Hope you guys enjoy yourselves. Yeah, all right. Cool. We all to the gate. Yeah, cool. So, yeah. All right. Now, that's all the time we have for this week. But we have put together all the lessons that we have learned on the website below so that you can go on with your own kind of farm education. So, next week, we'll be talking livestock and coopers will be here. We'll also be talking chicken, so that means Ken Chick will be in the house. Until then, have a great week and please keep on fumigating. Ah, man. What? Ah.